Oh, well. Buddy, and welcome back to R.I.P. Dead Not Runs 2023. I'm your host, Blackheart Wings, for this next handful of runs. And uh, I'm here with Alexis Gomu. Alexis goes, Moo. My goodness. My apologies. <laughs> All, right. All good. All right. So this is going to be a uh, Xenoblade Future Connected. We're going to be doing all Pond Specters. Uh, we're going to start at new game in three, two, one, go. So the opening is going to be a load. Um, I started a file earlier, like I did this before, because it lets the game load a little faster, and it also prevents stuff from disappearing from the game, which would be really not good if, like, the boss decides to despawn. Hopefully that won't happen. Anyway, super important, switch on casual mode, as this is the casual mode category of all pond specters. Uh, basically, it makes you do double damage, take half damage, and most importantly, avoid the agility um, penalty. So normally if an enemy is way above your level, you get penalized for that and you can't hit them ever. But with casual mode, we're gonna hit the enemies no matter what our level is. All right. So first, you have to do the menu. I'm gonna remove a art called Summon Earth then equip a few others. I'll explain why we do that in a little bit, but basically it's just to make the AI more cooperative. And now we're into our first fight. Um, basically we're going to be playing as Shulk for most of the run, and his attacks, you can see there's a little exclamation point. That's when we're in the correct position. The two arts that I use mostly are for the side, and there's going to be one art from the back. It's going to be really important throughout the run to make sure I don't have Chalk have aggro. Because if they he has aggro, then I can't attack, basically. Because the abilities aren't very useful if you're not attacking from the side. So anyways, for some of the story stuff... Um, we were going to fly to a city called Alchemoth on a ship, and then it got shot down, and that was the ship where we were at the beginning of the game at. And, um, we then go and rescue two Nopone, Nene and Kino. One of them Nene will actually be using throughout the run. The other Kino, we will never be using him, sadly, as he is a healer, and we don't need a healer in this. And then next we saw, like, some fire, so we knew there's people nearby, and then we're gonna head over there to Companion's Cape. I also got a skip travel point on the Vera Crossroads earlier, um, those are where you can fast travel to, and it's gonna be really important throughout the run to cut down on all the um, walking between places. Because this is going to be all pond specters, I have to go around the map a little bit more to gather them all. We'll be meeting the pond specters very soon. So we're going to get back to Trunks. And our first pond specter is going to be right at that wooden gate you can see over there. He's going to be 10-2. He is the only Pond Spectre that we are required to get, as he is blocking our way for the gate, and the cutscene is unavoidable. But it's really nice to have the Pond Spectres because they're basically almost extra party members. Like, they can do arts and they auto attack, just like our party member, but we can't control them. So anyway, here we go. He's going to basically explain the category to us. There are 12 Pond Spectres, they're from the Archaeology Center, and they're just kind of all throughout the Bionis shoulder, which is where we are for most of the LC. And since they're all scattered around, um, they can't go and actually do their objective. So he's going to give us a quest to go and find all the other Pond Spectres. One of them is right through this tunnel, by the way, very nearby, but I guess he just didn't want to go through there. 
Also, um, any cutscene that's not voiced, we cannot skip. But thankfully, there's only two in the entire run. This is going to explain our constructors, and we're going to go right to our next one. It's going to be Eleven. Their names are going to sound a little silly, and it's because they're all named like after numbers. One through twelve. You can see the flags, by the way, above their head. Um, they're really easy to see because of those. And Eleven is really one of the harder ones to do. So, um... She had a sandwich, and she dropped it in a lake, and the Sardis ate it. So we're gonna have to get revenge on them. So we're gonna be doing our only fight as Melia, and our only fight involving water. It can be a little hard as um, if they get on land, they will run away and disengage combat. Which will be very not good for us. And our no pwn allies, both Nene and um, our Pons Vector, uh, if they're in water, they're too short to attack. So we also need to be close to land for them to attack. And to explain why I do that fight as Melia, by the way, as it might sound a little odd, because Shulk usually is better, um, they have a lot of attacks that knock you down, um, and when that happens, if you're doing an art, you get interrupted. And if you get interrupted doing an art, you don't get the art back, you lose it. And that would be very, very unfortunate, as we have pretty long um, load times for like how they recharge. So anyways, uh, second part of the quest, we have to go cook more cobs because he's still hungry because we got revenge but that didn't actually make her have something to eat. So we get some more cobs and thankfully they spawn in scripted locations. So like um it's pretty easy to get them instead of having like collectible RNG. And now Eleven joined our party. One other thing to note is you saw that enemy attack me. Um, it's one of the reasons you kind of want to do 11 pretty fast is um, if that enemy were to have seen me while I was trying to collect the Moro Cobbs, I wouldn't be allowed to collect them until I'm out of combat. So ideally you want to go and beat them very fast, the Sardis, so you don't have to worry about that. So anyways, we're now going to go and kind of head towards the story, but... At the same time, there's quite a few Pond Spectre quests we can pick up along the way. First is going to be Fora. She is all the way over there. She's looking actually at the edge of a cliff, and she wants to go over there. There's going to be some Chromars, and they're blocking her path, so she can't go over there yet. Can also make sure those enemies don't see me. They usually disengage by the time you get the Vephora, but sometimes they don't, so I just uh, would stand still for a few seconds. Anyway, so you said the um, entire Pond Spectre slogan, and that's a lot of work, so now we have to help her. But we're going to actually do that quest quite a bit later, as they're level 67, which is doable, but a lot faster if we leveled up. And now we're going to do... I guess the closest thing we have to escape in the run, we're going to drop down here. And there's really conveniently a rock right here. And then we're going to get our health back while walking over. And then there's also a rock here. And that way we skipped about two minutes of walking. That's called Sculper's Plant Skip, and it's not too bad to do. Now to another Bond Spectre. We're gonna run past some turtles that are surprisingly fast, actually, despite their size. And they will attack me twice. But if I jump, then the animation will be cancelled for it. Although, they also miss twice, and that's really weird, because, like, they, they usually don't miss that much. Anyways, 
Next one, Spectre, Ninoa. Before we get to him, we're gonna go up here. This is because there's a skip travel point right near him, which is very convenient. The game tends to do that a lot, by the way. It tends to put a lot of skip travel points right around where upon Spectre is. So when we have to turn in the quest, it won't be that hard. So uh, Ninoa thinks he's a god, and he gave us a quest to get this um, item to prove our worthiness, so he will join us. And it's actually in the quarry that we're heading to right now, and we're gonna go into the quarry as well, but we're not gonna do the quest yet. Just gonna get some um, skip travel points. Uh, you can almost see the quarry right around here. It's going to be over there. And what I'm going to do is, I did this earlier, but we're going to skip travel to the location we just got. Just to save time on movement, because skip travels load very, very fast in this game. They're so fast that it's sometimes faster just to skip travel than walk, even if you're right next to the location. Now we're going to go and do the quarry. Our goal with this is going to be to get a skip travel point and then die. Because when we get it, we'll respawn there. And we already permanently get it. And there's a lot of high level enemies here. So hopefully they attack me. We land here at that egg. So now I'm in combat. And then we're going to get attacked here. And hopefully they'll hit me. And now we have a whole bunch of enemies here and as well as above us. So ideally I'll die right when I get to location. Uh, good job enemies. They're trying their best. Well they almost got me. There we go. Good job. So yeah, now I got a lot of Margaz sweeping. And then we're gonna warp the Zephyr's Council. This is the skip travel point we got while we were doing Eleven's quest. And now we're going to start heading towards the story locations. You can see Alchemoth is in the distance, and we're going to teleport there. Can I sneak in a donation? Um, yes, this is a good time. Awesome. We have $10 from Ryder Cath that says pet the doggo. Friendly reminder that we do have some incentives and some polls. Uh, that one specifically is for our next run coming up, the uh, Pokemon Scarlet uh, run. Let us know if you want us to pet, pet the doggo Pokemon or if we should just let, uh, I think, make him pass out. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Anyways... Uh, send in a donation. Let us know you what what you want us to do. Alrighty, and just in time, we're almost to the quest location because we're actually going to do a pond specter that's along the way. So we're going to get the skip travel point because we are dropping down, and we don't want to take the long way up. And then there's we get a surprise quest. There's three ant holes. And they are attacking Deka Deka. So we're going to save him. Shulk jumping from such high cliffs is so nerve-wracking. It always makes me nervous that he's going to lose all his HP. It really is. Because you can actually <laughs> die in that location if I'm just slightly off. Thankfully oh, that God. didn't happen. If I was like a teeny bit more forward, we would uh, have to go and do this again. That's so interesting that the jumps have to be so precise. I love that. Yeah, there's actually another one from the left, um, I mean the right side, that's the same thing. I think it's that like if you auto run, you won't get it. But if you, as long as you don't auto run and you're holding the control stick forward, you won't die. But we'll go there in a little bit. First, we have to actually advance the story. I learned that the hard way, by the way, when I wanted it just to auto run and take a break and then I realized that I died. Oh no! So 
Speaking of auto run, very nice it is in this game as a good amount of it is walking and we have bridges like this where I can kind of just set the controller down for a little bit and enjoy the music. I really like the Unbionis Shoulder Night music. And there's our tower. This is actually from Xenoblade 1, this like entire area. And we're gonna go up here, and then there's gonna be a teleporter. That's how we're gonna get into Alchemoth. And thankfully, I love the story memo. Always helps me remember where we are. Yeah, so we were told about the Fog King, and uh, we're gonna go and check it for ourselves. We believe that's what saw us out of the sky. And now we're gonna go and see what the Fog King is. Alchemoth. And we're gonna actually skip travel right away because we get main entrance and it's gonna take us super duper far ahead. Like, look how far this takes us. Now we're already to the ramp. That's where the boss is. But there's a bomb inspector right nearby and we're gonna do that instead. This is um, Dry Dry. His quest is he wants to be a high Entia. Yeah. And so we're gonna collect some feathers and I think he makes like a hat out of it. And this is actually one of the more easy quests as um, there are enemies in this area, but only after a certain part of the story, which we haven't done yet. So this is just a very empty area that we can walk through and get these feathers. Alright, we got our feathers and hack the main entrance and to dry dry. We're actually going to unlock something called Union Strike now. Um, you can see the flags on the um, Han Spectres. And when you get three of them of different colors, you can use Union Strike. Um, it's going to be our main damage healing technique throughout the run. And even though we just got it before a boss fight, this boss is too weak for it. We have, um, you'll see when we get to the fight. There's the party gauge. We gotta get that completely full to be able to Union Strike. And this fight is just, I'm gonna win before that happens. So not really useful for this one. And you can see the big Fog Rift over there. And we think this is the Fog King, but uh, it's actually just a giant bird that's affected by the Fog King. All right, so we're gonna lose aggro. And I'm gonna start doing some side arts. Um, Shadow by this, it um, reduces our aggro and it also increases our physical arts damage. I'm looking for a debuff called Defense Down. You can see the um, debuffs in the top of the boss's HP bar. Sadly, it um, took quite a bit to get it. <laughs> We actually took three tries, but it's all good. As Melia used Bolt and took them out. Getting defense down isn't too big of a deal, but it does help a lot with the fights. And so now we're gonna rescue someone named Taylene, who is being attacked. And we're then gonna go to his laboratory. I'm also going to be getting this item orb as it's one of the ones that has a high chance of being the one collectible that we need throughout the run. Sadly we didn't get it there, but there's going to be quite a few more high chance ones throughout the run. And there's our 
there's the laboratory. We're gonna meet Taylene and Tyria. Actually, their characters from Xenoblade 1, but uh, they're not gonna be on screen, sadly, during the run, actually. Only in cutscenes. Now that we advanced the story, we're gonna go back to Pillar Knoll. And this is the part I mentioned about being really close with this falling. I basically wanna to go to the right of this tree, and as long as I hold forward, we will be fine. That is such a high drop. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> See, that one is really, really high. One of the highest ones we do on the run. All right. We got attacked with a Vang, but it's okay because I, I knew they were going to and I jumped. And anyways, our goal is to get to the ramparts. You'll see them in the camera right now. I'm going to just ignore that and we're going to get a Pond Spectre quest instead. It does lead what? way up there. Yes. Oh, I see. Yep. It's going to be oh. one of the higher places in the game. And There's I so many cliffs fall. and everything. I don't know yeah. much about Xenoblade Chronicles, but I do love watching you play. I lurk in your streams sometimes. That's nice. I like I playing wanted these to, games. I wanted this to is ask, like what is it? Run. Is it? What's, what's your I favorite like part about the run? Uh, <laughs> it's short. <laughs> most of the games in this, most, I've been running the new game and it's like two hours long. The only one like that is 100% with this and the others are like four or five hours. But this is short and the combat's a lot more like posi positional instead of like math. I just have mm -hmm. to be good at position stuff for it. That's great. There's always a run that suits somebody really well, and I know I know that you run Pawn Spectres a lot, so I, I was I was dying to know what it is that appeals to you so much about it. Yep. And the Pawn Spectres are very cute. They are. And anyway, <laughs> sets of, uh, he wants us to take out some birds. That will actually be the last one we do. And anyways, also, you need to be careful. So these are caterpillars. They're not caterpillars. No, they're eclons. Right. They look the same, but I get the enemy names mixed up sometimes. But anyway, the reason I'm like super scared of them and running very far away is if they see me, they will bind me. And if they bind me, then I will be not able to move. And so thankfully the backup is you just run all the way to the left and skip travel to the um, cutscene flag anyway. So it lets us kind of not have to worry about them too much. We're almost the Grand Dell. There's a big, big tower. We don't climb it in this category, sadly. It's kind of hard to climb. You have to jump like 10 times on terrain that basically looks like you don't have to jump, but you do. You do see that a little bit in Old King's Testament, though. But uh, yeah, there's a big secret area up there. It gives us a lot of experience. But levels are pretty easy for this. Anyway, here's the most important character, One One. He's actually going to tell us once again the category. Gather 11 Pond Spectres. And then he'll have a quest of his own. He made it to Grand Dell. And we're gonna do some shopping. This is kind of silly because this is the only time we do this in the run, but it's actually really, really useful. I guess I have to be careful because um, if you were to accidentally buy stuff, I would not have the money for it. That's a weapon for Nene. And it's gonna go and make her a little more defensive and give her a lot more critical hit rate. It's gonna save time with some of the longer fights in the run. Now we're gonna equip it right now and do the art menu. Basically just gonna level up our arts with the AP we have. And we're gonna level up ice. That art is very useful by the way. It helps make a lot of the fights more consistent. We always got the art, but um, the thing is Melia doesn't use it until way later. 
in her AI um, rotation. So what I did is I've learned that removing Earth puts it into the first three arts that she uses. So now we're gonna get a lot more damage up front. We'll see it in this fight. As well as the next few. Throw these Buster because it's both of them. And I heard Ice Fade and um, Feather Springs. So we're good. <laughs> we actually got lucky and got Sword Drive, so that fight ended much sooner than usual. And now, uh, what's going on in the story, by the way, is um, the Fog Beast. They're starting to attack outside Alchemoff. So we then run back to town because we realize they're probably here as well. that you're running um future connected it's the dlc right for the the main yes. game yes it's um well it was added to the it's not quite dlc it just was like packed in with um the re-release on switch mm -hmm. hello galgar this is gonna be our first union strike by the way so i lowered his defense now we get to play a quick time event the better I do, the quicker they will die. I think the last one is like a two frame window, but the other two are like pretty easy. So I'm gonna try to get him with backslash. And the reason I want to kill Galgar so fast is um, as long as Galgar is up, the fight will not end until he's done his dialogue. Which is why it's super duper important to go and take him out as quickly as possible. Even if he uses up good art like Backslash. Because um, I can redirect the party with um, focus attacks to attack um, the um, Defender Ados. So they're already going to be pretty weakened by the time Gagar's dead anyway. And now we're going to look for High Aether. So we were talking to that soldier who didn't know where it was, but he said so many other ramparts right now. So we're going to talk to another person over here. They're also not going to know, but they're going to tell us to know someone who will know. So Dak to Grandel. And from here, we're going to be both advancing the story and doing a whole bunch of Pond Spectre quests. First, we're going to Prayer Rock. You can see it's the island that's way over there. This is the Pond Spectre we usually do in the story for any percent, but um, here we're going to do them quite a bit later so we can um, do them in the um, story at the same time. It's going to be Tutu. Tutu's problem is um, he lost his Mira, so he can't stare at himself. And he's not going to go back to 1-1 one, one because he's staring at its reflection in the water. And he won't leave until he has his mirror. So we have to find it. Right on this island. Now it's really nice. I don't have to actually talk to Tutu first. I can just avoid the giant turtle. <laughs> if I'm a tiny bit closer, they would see me. And that would not be good. And then we're going to walk right into a line to Tutu. It's pretty fast to um, skip travel there. And also, if I didn't, there's going to be a bird unique monster that will aggro when I'm trying to talk to Tutu. So no matter what, we have to skip travel to get to this quest. Here he is. You can see he's looking at his reflection. And he's going to tell us we're big fans and we're going to help him. <laughs> so I have to keep my finger away from the B button before I start matching because I will jump and sometimes I accidentally target the birds which is not very good because then I will be in combat and I cannot get the quest in combat. Uh, I can see how that would be potentially problematic. <laughs> yeah it would be. So here's Sarja. Uh, she's gonna tell us Finally, where the high ether is, 
And once we talk to her, it spawns and we won't have to talk to another NCP. But we're going to actually not do this right away. Instead, we're going to do two contract requests together. We got them a long time ago. It's going to be for Fora and Nanova. So right around this corner, here are the Grimars. Come on. There we are. And they are very inconvenient because they are blocking her away. So we're going to go and take them out. So I start with that quick time event. So I get um, high um, tension at the start. You can see my characters are yelling. I want this our crit rate. was a surprisingly good thing that happened. Uh, now we just need to leave this fight. Almost thought that was going to go bad. It's pretty important to get full gauge for the upcoming part. So I got really lucky by accidentally attacking that Skeeter. Now we actually get to do the nice strat. So I'm going to pour this Aruga. And then I'm going to pull this boss. Or I guess not boss. It's quite started for Nanoa. And you can see... Because I'm in combat, my party gauge goes up. This is really convenient because the old strat used to be, um, how do I put it? You used to just pray that you would get a crit. And if you didn't, you'd have to like walk around and hit them from the side and all. But instead of this strat, uh, as long as you have full gauge, you can just walk and that's how you get it. And it's convenient because we have to walk here anyway to get the quest. For the main story. And now we can just turn into Noah and um, Vephora's quest as well. And once again, the skip travel points are really nice because they are all mostly close to the bond structures. So here he is. He did his quest and we're gonna go to the World of Shambles, which really is just, um, he lost his license for being a bond specter. And that's really what his quest was, to get his license back. And for Vephora, well, we cleared the path for her, and now she's actually going to have to go over to her goal. So you can see she's looking over there, and that's where she wants to be. Right around those ruins. So once we talk to her, she's going to go to the ruins. And then once we talk to her over, over there... Then we're on her quest. And even though she wanted us to clear the enemies, she has a lot of enemies on the way anyway, so I'm not really sure how she dealt with those ones, but we have a way to avoid them. We're gonna take this little arch. down here and then we're going to drop down and that will get us to Vephora. There she is. You also can see a fog beast. Um, after we fight the first fog beast, the, um, the old ponios, they start to spawn. And they are actually going to play a role in this run. Specifically right now they're going to go and appear here. I'm ready to tutorial. I'm gonna skip it. You get that tutorial because they pulled um, some other enemies when they use their like fog power. Not really sure what it is. The tutorial actually explained what it is, but I skipped it. But anyway, the point is, um, even though you get the tutorial, it's still faster on movement by like a second to go that way. We used to like loop around and avoid the enemies. We don't have time for story. This is a speed run. <laughs> yep. And we have our story memo to save us when I forget where we're doing. But this part I definitely remember because um, we need to get a Sky Bowl. I mentioned earlier there is one collectible that I need for the run. And the quest is for um, the Fafa's quest. And she's actually the next fun sector we're doing. Thankfully, I guess because they're named Sky Moles, a lot of them are high up. 
So we have a lot of chances to get bum along the path. I'm just gonna aggro um everything. Don't worry, they can't catch me. There's also okay, it didn't happen thankfully. Sometimes an enemy dies here. I don't know what I do. Like an enemy dies and the treasure chest just falls in front of me. It scared me a bit the first time, but now I'm kinda used to it. I definitely didn't fight because we just walked towards the goal. But um, this is a Pawn Specter, but this is not Fafa. This is Eska. She wants us to plant a stake. And I like how like, she's looking for where it is. So we're going to do that pretty soon. Very soon, actually. As soon as we get down to there. To Cloud Top Lookout. Also, going to be Prime Sky Bowl location time. Item Orb. There it is. Usually I get lucky with this one, but a few other ways I can get it if I don't get it here. But you got a carrot. At least you can eat carrots. And we have one more chance here. He got some steel. Anyway, now we're actually just going to go back to Navar Crossroads. And we're going to do Heska's quest real quick. Well, part one of it anyway. See, we have to walk back to her to go and activate part two. And doing that puts us on the path right around where Fafa is. So it's pretty convenient. And as you can see, we have to walk a really long way. Because, um... Heska is probably the most out of the way of the Pond Spectres. We have to climb all the way up here, then walk down the arch again. When we've got a good opportunity for donations? Ah, uh, this will be a good time. Well, I'm very happy to announce that we have surpassed $200 raised for RIP debt, which is absolutely fantastic. We've also got $10 from Anonymous with no comment, but it did tie the poll for Pokemon Scarlet, so petting the dog and fainting the dog are currently tied. Any little bit of do any little donation that you put towards it will break the tie. Uh, we would love to have a definitive answer. So every little bit counts, um, especially with RIP debt, every penny counts. So send in your donations and break that tie, folks. Alrighty. Yep. You should try to pet the dog, by the way. That's the good thing to donate to. Alright. You gotta trouble. pet the dog, always. And gonna look for a sky mold over here. If we don't get it, what's really nice about the um, Fitted Definition is it will mark things on the map as an explanation point. So if I don't get it, I'll be able to use that to uh, know where one is. Let's see, you gotta be a sky mole. Nope, you're a leaf. Alright, so now we're gonna just activate her um, quest. And we'll figure out where our sky mole is from there. Alright, so it looks like there's one over there. So we're gonna go on an adventure. Oh no, we got a fog beast stacking us. Uh, that's a lot of fog beast. We'll go this way. I love how completely unfazed you are by the fog beast. Are easily twice Shulk's height following you. <laughs> yeah. We usually fight um hundred percent we actually have to fight that fog beast, but uh this we mostly are interested in getting Sky Ball. There's our Sky Ball. Again, it's really nice that the map um, shows me locations of all of them. Because 
That is a random spawn. And now we got our Sky Ball. So now we can go and give 5-5 five, five and start part 2. It's also nice that there's that skip travel point because, as you can see, I dropped down the cliff and very far away. And we're actually going to do that right again. We normally want to fight this one with spawns from the quest and is also a lower level. But um, we're not going to do that as they were around another enemy. So then we'd be fighting like three enemies at once. That would be rather hard. So instead we're going to take this one because they're always going to be standing still in an isolated location. Alright, and then once again we can warp back up here and turn in Fafa's quest. And after this we're actually going to continue the story a bit. We were mostly doing this so we hit a level threshold to make the upcoming boss fight faster. As we used to do it with the red bar, but now we do it with the yellow bar. That's like the um, boss, the, well, just any enemy in general. The color of the health bar. That depends on like how accurate you can be. Because even though we're playing on casual, we still can sometimes get misses. So back to the grand down, and we're gonna turn in the high ether. That's, we got that a while ago. And we're gonna turn it in. Now a whole bunch of fog beasts are attacking. We're gonna do some boss fights now. There's actually gonna be three in a row. First, Mammut. And Mammut's unique in that I can't union strike them. As a boss is right after them. So we want to save our union strike. It's also very important that they got toppled. As by toppling them, um, they're not going to do a move that would topple us. We are, um, <laughs> too fast of a fight. <laughs> Oops. Alright, so normally we'd like to get full party gauge, but, um, sadly I won too quickly. So instead we're going to have to fight the scary boss for a little bit. There's a big spider, and uh, I don't like spiders very much. Normally we would just union strike them, but I need to get my gauge up a little bit. There we go. Now we can do it. The reason we want to use union strike here and not like for a mammoth is one mammoth will almost be dead by the time we get full one. And two, there's a lot of little enemies there, so we'd have to um, worry about like all of them as well, because there's not just a boss. So anyways, um, hello Tay Tay, took you a little bit to spawn in. But anyway, we're going to um, do Tay Tay, as well as Heska's quest. Both of them are going to be done back to back, similar to Fofora and Anoa, as they're both like in the same locations. Oh, so there's one boss that's actually attacking everyone, but we're just going to leave them there. They'll be fine. We have some quests to do. Hello, bird. Ah, we blocked the bird. Blocking is usually a good thing, but um, in this case, it's not because we kind of stop for a little bit when we do that. But, all right. So we're going to another ruins. You may know there's a lot of ruins around here. That's because the Bionis Soldier is the birthplace of the giants. So that's why there's a lot of spiders, because the lore from Xenoblade 1 is they fought a war with the spiders and they lost. So this ruins, for example, is going to have a lot of spiders, and you saw that the other ones we were in did as well. So I suppose this section isn't very arachnophobia friendly. No, it is not. We'll actually have to sneak past um, some spiders very soon for Tay Tay's quest, but Heska is going to come first. Another blade bird. We get a lot of those. So we're going to drop down here. And I don't want to be seen by these enemies. It's 
not like the end of the world if I do, but it does lose a little bit of time. Hopefully we didn't get seen by the Watcher, by the way. Because if we do get seen by them, we'll have to go and um, basically do a death warp to get back up here. But we didn't. We moved correctly, so we didn't get seen. And that got us Huska's stake. Because um, we got the stake, but as soon as we planted, I guess once we warped away, it got stolen by that Turkin. So now I need to go and see where the spiders are. Uh, oh, that's a really bad position. Oh no. Whew, we did it. We got seen by the egg, but that despawns. Usually you want that um spider to be like either all the way to the left or all the way to the right. But that one was like really close to me. Thankfully I managed to sneak by without having to take one. And that is Tay Tay's quest. And we also did Heska's quest, so um back to Cloud Type Lookout one last time. And we get to walk up here. Turn it in. This time she's not gonna have a part three. Tesca. And if we're keeping count, we have two more pawn specters and then two more story bosses to go. So we're almost done. And then the one that we do with at least set set is second to last, because we have to do one one last, because he um only does this quest when we do eleven. We got set set a really long time ago. And we're gonna fight those three birds finally. So we're gonna back to the um island. I walk across the bridges again. They're gonna be over there. And the reason we do this so late in the run is you'll see when we turn the camera, everything that's on fire over there, that's where the boss is. And we're gonna want to union strike them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this fight. And hopefully fill our Union Strike, I mean our party gauge up to full. And hopefully start with the Union Strike. Hello birds. Sometimes these birds can despawn on some of the older routes and the enemies just aren't there, but thankfully that hasn't happened in a long time. Alright, so we pulled the birds. Wow, all three of them, nice. Very nice. That way we'll get a lot of splash damage. Alright, kind of want to get that burst affinity. Alright, a little more party gauge. That's good enough. We sadly, um, Melia actually used Spear Break and knocked them away a little bit, but no big deal. So, what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go and focus on the dinosaur. Called Dinosaurus, by the way, it's always a silly name. And then I'm gonna lower our defense a bit. And Union Strike. And this should kill the boss pretty guaranteed. But they will get really low damage rolls. And thankfully the bats died as well. Sometimes you'll have like the bats, like one of them will be out of range of the Union Strike. And then they'll be uh, just chilling with full health. Thankfully that didn't happen though. And now we get to climb here again. Turn in set set. Almost fell. It's really easy not to fall down. 
The only concern I have is my controller has drift. So Oh no. <laughs> there's technically a chance that I might just not really fall one of all, but I'll end up falling due to drift. Thankfully my drift has been bad during this run. Alright. Here sits it. And back to Rango. And we already talked to 1-1 one, one for part 1. This is going to be part 2. Lance us to retrieve a very important amount. So we're going to go back to the Vera Crossroads. We're going to go like we're going to TT's quest. But instead we're going to drop down. Basically this area is like kind of enemy territory. And there's like a bunch of watcher enemies. So they see you, they'll run and alert other enemies. And a whole bunch of stuff. But thankfully we can just kind of sneak in by around that tree you can see and avoid all the enemies which is very nice because like i said it's a lot of them and our goal is to get over here and then we're going to climb on up and fight the cut purse igna for this is a little interesting because um the new strat for this is to knock them off the ledge with Nene using Sword Drive, but I'm actually going to just fight them because I need party gauge for marathon strats for the final boss. And this guy is a nice way to kind of build up party gauge. So instead we're going to do that. You can do it, Nene. Wow, we actually just got that mile down. Oh. Got our memo. Sadly, we actually got attacked here, so I'm actually just gonna jump. <laughs> uh, we'll lose our party gauge, but sort of the best solution to that. And anyway, back to Grandel approach. And we can turn in our quest and learn the true purpose of the bond sectors. They're gonna basically, we're gonna have another cutscene like we did with the same music and everything. We had when we got our first bond sector. And they're gonna explain our goal is they wanna go and make money for the archaeology center. So they're gonna get some gold mushrooms that are in the um, necropolis. them so much. <laughs> I love them too. They're really silly. <laughs> They're gonna tell us to go and fight a giant. Well, we don't know. There's, there's a giant dragon in there. That's the super boss of the game. And they're really hard, even on casual mode. Uh, thankfully, they're not required for this category because they're like way, way harder than the final boss. And at our current level, we would uh, not be able to win. Instead, Time to go to off. And we're gonna walk up the um, ramp like we did the last time we were here. This time we're gonna go inside though because we're heading right to the final boss. We're zooming. <clears throat> I have a quick donation if we have a moment. Yep, we have about a minute or so until we get to the boss. Heck yeah! I've got five dollars from Cheville Tortu that says, "I wish the Xenoblade games were available on PC. They look so cool." Are they console exclusives? They're um yeah, they're Monolith Soft is owned by Nintendo, so probably always going to be exclusive to Nintendo stuff. That makes sense. So anyway, here's our Lexus. Uh, we're gonna go and play with this um fog base for a little bit. Basically, I'm gonna use them for cage. No backslash. Backslash, um, it does a lot of damage. Also generates a lot of aggro. And um, we're also done building up gates because we have our affinity. <laughs> I'm not gonna disengage from combat. I'll actually let them mess with the um, Luxus for a little bit. As the longer they're fighting and 
I'm in combat, the Lardinger, I'm gonna have Gage. They can even daze Nene, it's okay. Wonder if they'll get the kill before we um disengage. Ah, they couldn't do it. But anyway, the reason I do that is Fall King is a two-phase fight. And basically, we want to go in with as much gaze as possible for a phase two. Otherwise, it's a little dicey. So in order to make it not dicey, I'm going to go in with as much gaze as I can. The reason is, is not Fall King himself, but the knights he's going to summon. He's going to do it right away. You're going to see summon knight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Union Strike, but um, I have all 12 Pond Spectres now. It does a lot of damage, and I want to use Fall King to put up um, Gage. So I just sat the controller down, just to make sure I don't accidentally hit a button. And the Fog Knights are dead. And now it's just time to put up Gage. Alright, we got our topple, and we got our days. And, um, I'm gonna just, uh, basically chill. And we're just putting up gauge. I could use backslash. I'll use it in, like, a little bit. I'll give us another round where side arts. Alright, and time to win. Right in time, we got full gauge. And then, remember when he summoned knights before? He's going to do that again, but this time it's three knights. And the knights are really scary because they gang up on Shulk, and we hopefully won't see this, but sometimes they'll have like a sad-looking profile. That means their tension is low. And low tension, you basically miss every attack, which would not be very good for the run. So, to prevent that, we're going to take out all the knights. Alright, so now we're basically in the, um, come, coming, like, oh, it's done. Alright, so we already won, as I have Union Strike. So time is when this HP bar goes to zero, and it will right after this Union Strike. So that will be time. Amazing GG's! Thanks for the GG's. <laughs> it's always nice when we get to end it with Union Strike. While we're watching this cutscene, I do want to give a shout out to our anonymous donor who sent in one dollar with no comment. We really appreciate it. Every little bit helps, as per usual. And friendly reminder that uh, the pet the dog, faint the dog is still tied. So that run is coming up next. Get your donations in. 